Sri Lankans roamed through a ransacked presidential palace on Sunday has come. Somewhat returned to the commercial capital Colombo, this a day after protesters barged into the building, forced the president, Gotabaya Rajapaksha, to announce his resignation. Here are the top five developments in the story right now. First, four ministers have resigned from the cabinet over the last two days amidst this unrest. The embattled president, Gotabaya Rajapaksha, whose location is still unknown since the protesters overran both his office and his official residence, has ordered officials to ensure the smooth distribution of cooking gas. So he still seems to be working. Uh, the uh, Sri Lankan army chief has sought the people's support to maintain peace as the island nation grapples with an unprecedented economic crisis. Meanwhile, uh, three people have reportedly been arrested for uh, uh, setting the Sri Lanka prime minister's uh, private residence on fire. That was on Saturday night. Now, Prime Minister Vikramasinghe has said that he's going to step down uh, on the 13th. And this is to allow an all-party interim government to take over. Now, with the Rajapaksa scheduled to quit on Wednesday, this is according to the Speaker of Parliament, thousands of anti-government protesters in Sri Lanka, remember on Saturday, barged into the embattled president's official residence in a high-security fort area. After breaking those barricades, they've been demanding his resignation over the island nation's worsening economic crisis, worst crisis actually in recent memory. The protesters also torched the private residence of uh, the Prime Minister. The speaker is now going to be the acting president in the absence of both the president and the prime minister. So we have a nation here with a complete power vacuum. No president, no prime minister either. And we're going to see an election among MPs that must happen now in order to elect a new president. The prime minister had also offered to resign in May that uh, President uh, uh, Rajapaksha's elder brother and the Prime Minister then, Mahinda Rajapaksha, had to quit in the face of massive anti-government protests. The Rajapaksha brothers, Mahinda and Gotabaya, were hailed by many in Sri Lanka as heroes for winning the civil war against the LTTE, but they are now blamed for the country's worst economic crisis. And as protesters continue to occupy the Sri Lankan President's official residence, India has said that it stands with the people of Sri Lanka. In a carefully crafted statement, the foreign ministry says that India stands with the people of Sri Lanka as they seek to realize their aspirations for prosperity and progress through democratic means and values, established institutions and constitutional frameworks. Pointing to the financial aid that India has extended to the island nation as it battles its worst economic crisis, the statement says that Sri Lanka occupies a central place in India's neighborhood First policy, saying that India is Sri Lanka's closest neighbor and our two countries share deep civilizational bonds. All right, uh, let's uh, go across uh, to our discussion on left, right and center tonight. What is next for Sri Lanka? The army chief has appealed for peace. But could the political chaos complicate efforts to pull Sri Lanka out of its worst economic crisis in several decades, triggered by a severe shortage of foreign currency that has stalled the imports of essentials like fuel, food and medicines, underscoring the urgency of arriving at an agreement with the International Monetary Fund or the IMF. Joining us uh, on left, right and centre, Rof Hakim, Member of Parliament, Leader of uh, Sri Lanka's uh, Muslim Congress, Arita Vikramasinghe, Lawyer and Equality Director, uh, um, Rohan Samarajiva, a Sri Lankan Policy Analyst and Chairman of the Learn Asia Think Tank. We have Ambika Satkunathan, former Human Rights Commissioner, of Sri Lanka, Nuzli Hameen, a youth activist, uh, one of uh, the young protest leaders who started off these protests in Colombo that we saw uh, beginning on Saturday, and Manjuset, former ambassador of Hakim, member of parliament. Uh, uh, to you first, <coughs> we don't have details of a transition of power. That doesn't seem to be clear. We have a huge vacuum of power uh, at the helm in Sri Lanka. The speaker has outlined proposals from a meeting of political parties on Saturday. This means Parliament now has to pick an acting president. Is there a time limit for this, sir? What happens next? No, as it stands, uh, since the Prime Minister is also yet to resign, uh, the President, though he has announced that he will go on the 13th, uh, there is a small uh, time frame within which the opposition parties uh, could uh, come to an uh, agreement among ourselves as to... Uh, forming an all-party government. And this is the wish of the main civil society groups, except for one or two, who insist that uh, they must uh, also be consulted and that their uh, 
uh, a certain minimum uh, common minimum program could be arrived uh, should be arrived at so um, all of us are now in intense discussions with each other several parties have uh, been meeting uh, uh, today and as a matter of fact uh, the jvp the janata vimukti peramuna leader uh, dropped in to see me a while ago and we had a discussion and his wish is that uh, we must have a temporary caretaker government uh, uh, for a few months and then uh, we should go for an election his argument uh, perhaps is based on the fact that uh, since there are so many splinter groups among the uh, uh, ruling party uh, coming to a political consensus on many matters could pose certain problems mm. so this being the perception all of us are now getting together to try and somehow achieve an all party consensus on forming uh, uh, a caretaker government uh, of sorts uh, raw for came that may later. be easier said than done and so as of now we still have a political vacuum and uh, there's political chaos at the helm in the midst of this sri lanka desperately needs that international the imf uh, those funds the imf which has been in talks with the sri lankan government for a possible 3 billion dollar bailout says it's monitoring these events closely that they're hoping for a resolution of the current crisis that will allow for resumption of our dialogue is what they're saying is there a need to have clarity politically before the imf moves forward and is that not a catch 22 no certainly but that we are possessed of the fact and we have also been uh, as the common opposition particularly the main opposition party has been in touch with imf officials whenever they visit sri lanka we are in continuous touch with uh, even the uh, uh, government and the central bank officials okay. and we have kept ourselves abreast of what is happening with the imf negotiations so uh, while that is going on we are also quite uh, uh, possessed of the fact that uh, political stability is a key factor in yeah. finally coming to an agreement with, with IMF and that is why we are now uh, in intense discussions to uh, form a uh, uh, caretaker government uh, without any delay and we also are uh, quite worried that the prime minister is still hanging on uh, despite the fact that uh, overwhelming majority have asked him to go and it is unfortunate that his house has been uh, uh, of course so the prime minister is still hanging on happen. thank you so much sir i know you have to go let's get in yes. nusli hamin is a youth activist one of those protest leaders who started the protest in colombo uh, nusli we have the army chief calling for peace uh, there's no one in charge right now you protesters are still staying on today in the prime minister's residence in all of those official uh, arenas why is that is that because you don't believe that the resignation will actually come in on uh, wednesday but as long as you continue to stay uh, sri lanka can't uh, move forward absolutely we do not believe what uh, the tactics that rajapaksha and uh, pranil vikramasinghe has been using for the past decade right they've been they've been always fox tactics that been they've been using they've been lying to people over and over again so we we won't leave the place until they are resigning you you can like uh, anyone can blame uh, the financial te- uh, turmoil for the like problems under the protesters but we have been always peaceful we have always allowed all the economic work to be happen so we never involved with any kind of uh, violence activities we never involved in imf discussions they have always happening in their own but what we what we are doing was peaceful protest so we will continue to do so at least until wednesday just like president is i don't know if he actually said the speaker saying he is willing to resign and uh, uh, and ranil vikramasinghe had said he is willing to resign which we do not believe as well until we see the resignation letters On All right so these protesters are not don't. going away anywhere but they're saying that they are and are staying peaceful thanks uh, for that uh, nuzli let's bring in rohan uh, samarajiva 
and uh, Aritha Vikramasinghe, Ambika Satkunananthan. Uh, what happens next, right? Uh, how, what are the ways the globe is, of course, watching Sri Lanka right now? Who is going to help? What are the solutions? What are the way outs? Uh, first and foremost, Rohan, to you to counter Sri Lanka's fuel shortage at one point of time, uh, Ms. Vis Vikramasinghe had told the Associated Press that Sri Lanka may have to resort to buying discounted oil from Russia. Is that true? Is that a tactic to also put uh, pressure on the rest of the world, the Western countries, to come to Sri Lanka's aid? Well, India is buying oil from uh, Russia. Uh, Sri Lanka is willing to buy uh, oil from Russia, but uh, is unable to make the payments through the banks. Mm. So that is stuck. Uh, I don't think it's for the lack of uh, willingness. It's uh, because of inability. Mm. So let me ask you this. Sri Lanka has borrowed heavily from China, right, for its uh, infrastructure projects. The Chinese have described this as part of its Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, China has over the years been offering high interest loans for infrastructure projects in Sri Lanka. Is that an option, taking more loans from China? I don't think that option is available. The Chinese had given us a loan that is actually un completely unusable. Um, and this story that they are the largest, uh, largest of our creditors is hmm. not truth, something that the Western press and some people in the Indian press like to believe. But in actual fact, our, our largest amount of uh, debt is to the Asian Development Bank. Mm, uh, the Chinese component is about 10 percent. Interesting. Uh, Manju said, um, on the other hand, when you look at this globally, diplomatically, Sri Lanka is one of the world's busiest uh, shipping lanes, correct? So letting a country of such strategic st significance collapse is not an option either. Absolutely. Neither for India nor for the world. It is, uh, it is of utmost importance that the world takes uh, cognizance of this and acts quickly to help Sri Lanka to tide over this crisis, uh, to put some pressure on both the president and prime minister to quit and for a unity government or a, or a caretaker government to be formed at the very earliest. Uh, right now, from all accounts, it appears that nobody is really in charge and the president seems to have issued some order today regarding unloading of gas and supplying it Correct. to everyone. Uh, but uh, it does appear that there is nobody in charge. The army is trying and I think the police are trying, security forces are trying to get some semblance of uh, calmness into the capital, but I don't know how successful they're going to be. Because as uh, Mr. Uh, Newsley said just now, that he will not, uh, the protesters will not quit till they see the resignation letters. So both the president and uh, the prime minister need to submit their uh, resignations as soon as possible and so that this uh, phase can be you know uh, be, be done with and the unity government formation process begins uh, with immediate effect all right then um, only can you go to the next step of you know talking to the world governments and talking to uh, other countries hmm. and to talking to the imf all right so ambika yeah. satkuna nathan uh, there's nobody in charge, as Manju Seth has just pointed out. Is that not uh, a situation that is not conducive to organizations like the IMF actually taking the next step? We've also seen uh, political corruption has been a problem in India, uh, probably one of the reasons as to why Sri Lanka is where it is today financially. Uh, does this not complicate uh, any financial rescue for Sri Lanka or any assistance from the IMF or the World Bank, the, the, the situation right now in Sri Lanka? Well, as I think also uh, said by Dr. Samarajeeva and what you said, yes, of course, we do need political stability. But in order to have political stability, we also need a government that the people trust, mm. which means the president and prime minister do have to resign. We need an interim government. We need a very clear timeline for elections. And that is what will bring political stability, because when they appointed Prime Minister uh, Rani Lakshmi Singh as Prime Minister, the promise was of stability. But when you lack, when there is a lack of public trust 
and the government is seen as not being able to meet even basic needs, you are going to have staged social instability that cannot be avoided. And the problem here is that the military, is, uh, particularly after the war, has uh, encroached upon uh, in, into the civilian sphere. We do have militarization. The military uh, eats up 15% of our national budget. And uh, we have the military also now getting involved uh, in the maintenance of public order. All this it, this is very problematic and has an adverse impact on the rule of law as well as on the protection of human rights. Correct. All right. Lastly, Manju say to you, India says they are closely watching the situation on the ground in Sri Lanka. Uh, why is this uh, critical for how does this affect India? Uh, the MEA watching it closely, India's uh, closest neighbor, political crisis in India's uh, closest uh, neighborhood. Uh, how does this affect India? Uh, it affects India deeply <clears throat> uh, for various reasons. One, of course, uh, they're an important part of our neighborhood first policy. Uh, Sri Lanka, our closest neighbor, maritime security, freedom of navigation, and uh, allowing you know, uh, uh, shipping uh, lines to remain open. Plus, refugees could be a problem in the future if this, the situation doesn't stabilize soon. And if it's a crisis in Sri Lanka, it could affect India's security because who would get into that space? There's always a possibility of people who are, uh, or, or countries or forces who are inimical to India's interests could, uh, could go into that space. And uh, we would really, uh, uh, India would really not be uh, in, a, in, in a safe or secure position. So we really need right. to safeguard and to ensure that peace and uh, uh, peace returns to Sri Lanka and the caretaker government uh, is there and then, of course, elections to be held at the earliest. At the earliest. All right. I also have Aritra Vikramasinghe. Uh, uh, Aritra, uh, what next? Let me just start, go back to wind up this discussion with the, the question we started off with. What's next for Sri Lanka, according to you? How would you like to see this play out? I mean, I would really like to see and to echo what the protesters have been asking for is the immediate resignation of the president and the prime minister. Uh, I understand the time that has been asked for, uh, for this period in terms of ensuring the constitutional process takes place. There is an interim government in place. And as Ambika and, and Ms. Lee and the others have called out, there has to be a timeline for elections. Uh, we need to be able to elect a government that is legitimate in the eyes of the people. Uh, the current government, uh, we have about 60% of parliamentarians actually representing the political party of the president. Uh, unfortunately, all of them are, have lost their mandate and the trust of the people to rule and govern. Uh, they do not, they're not seen as legitimate anymore. So it is important that there is a fresh election. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Sri Lanka, I don't know how we will be able to afford the next election. I think it be important for uh, some kind of multilateral facility or loan to actually help fund this election uh, right. so that people can actually elect a legitimate government whom they can trust. All right. Thank you all for joining us and helping us understand the situation on the ground in Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining us on Left, Right and Centre. We're completely out of time. Good night.